Hey everyone, how you doing? It's Patrick from Vicious Computers and welcome to a brand new video. Today it's going to be a review of one of my LED lights that I've purchased for either videography or photography purposes. Lately, for the last, I'd say, six months, there's been a, a lot of equipment that I've purchased in hopes of either upgrading production quality here on some of the videos I do, or just for my hobbies, because I do photography and videography just for fun. It doesn't have to be for YouTube. YouTube is more of a hobby for me too. So uh, the trifecta for production on any kind of content creators, if you're making videos, it goes sound, lights, camera. And if you're doing photography, it's lights and camera. So lights are very important. I've been trying to do budget-minded purchases and I've purchased about 12 different lights over the last six months. Everything from stand-mounted LED panels to cob lights, which are the spotlights, to diffused LED lights, to the stuff that you put on your cameras. And as I've kind of progressed through better and better items, I now have what I consider to be the most high-end item I've purchased and what we're gonna be covering in today's review. This is the GVM YU150R. This is like a pro like model LED panel. It is all metal construction, it is heavy, it is bright and it is really cool. So we're gonna go ahead and get into all the details about this light, why I got it, and why you might wanna get it yourself. Let's start things off by taking a look at my terribly messy office. Some of the lights I've gotten, we got like the light bars, is the old Canon M50, which is now a webcam. These are my favorite kind of LED panels so far, the diffused edge lit LED panels, and then we got the cob lights. Now the cob lights I love, they're bright and they can be modified with light mounts like you would use in regular photography. And that makes them very awesome and very powerful. But the problem is you see how tiny it is in here? There's nowhere for me to put a large light modifier on those. So I ended up finding these edge lit panels and they do the diffusion really, really, really well without the need for the light modifiers. And that's exactly where the new GVM comes in. It's a edge lit type panel, it has very great diffusion. However, it doesn't require the light modifiers. And it's about, I don't know, five times brighter than these. And it has a lot more build quality and pro features. I'm, I'm kind of terrified to take these ones out sometimes. I'm afraid I'm gonna break them, but this thing is amazing. And just to kind of show you how good it is for transport, you even get a nice hard case with it as well. This is like a Pelican style hard case. So you get some really cool equipment. Let's go take a closer look at the light and how it works, some of the features. All metal construction, we got steel rails on the back of it. This is aluminum housing. We got ventilation and that's gonna be there for like your cooling fan because this does have a fan that runs. You have some fan control, but when you turn it on, the fan comes on immediately. It's not a loud fan, but if you were in a completely silent room and you're running like an omnidirectional microphone, I think you would be able to hear it if you had very quiet sound. But just talking, you can't hear it over talking, so that's pretty good. The uh, diffuser plate is removable. However, the LEDs that are in there are actually really, really well diffused even without that. So when we get it plugged in here in a second to look at the control panel and the brightness and the settings, you'll see just how good that looks. One of the things that was important to me is to have a portable light. So those cob lights, for example, they have power from plugging into the wall only. This will support plugging into the wall, but on each side, right here is one, and on the other side is one. We've got a place to attach two V-mount batteries, so you can run this off of V-mount batteries and take it out in the field. For some of the photo shoot ideas I have coming up, and even just simple photography or videography setups, even inside the studio space, sometimes it's easier to throw a battery on here than it is to go out of your way to run electric cables everywhere. The power cable you get with this thing is insane. It's like 15 feet long. It's a nice high quality power cable. So I'm happy to, to see that they gave us something nice with this. All right, so over to the side. This is where we got our power switch. The GVM logo illuminates and we got our screen here. It looks like it should be touch screen. It's actually color, but everything here is controlled by the knobs. So we have CCT, HSI, RGB, gels. We have all these different special effects. So 
I'm used to seeing just either CCT or HSI modes. So this is a first where I've seen a light have some of these extra modes, such as RGB and the gel mode, which makes it tailored for more of a pro setup because you can match your photography gels and get the same color space. Same thing, it's got DMX. On the top here, we have a DMX in and out. So this can actually be used in like a band setup or a stage setup. So you can actually plug this into your light controller and, and control it with all your stage equipment. Overkill for a small personal studio space like this one, but absolutely amazing if you need it. So this can be used both in the amateur and professional space. So let's go ahead and just take a look at some of these things. We'll go into CCT. And so we have our color space adjustments in here. So I can go from 0.1% brightness, which is amazing, by the way, because that was one of the big issues I have with some of my other LED panels is not that they weren't bright enough, but they weren't dim enough. So this goes down to 0.1, which you can barely even see on the wall. But when you have nothing but a dark room and you're looking for the perfect lighting, it's perfect. And we'll just crank this up. We're at 10%, 20%, and look, we're, we're at 35% and it's already going to blow out the exposure on the, uh, the camera. And let's just crank it all the way up. 80%, there's 100%. There's so much light coming from this that I feel like I could light up outdoors really well. So I have a photo shoot coming up where I'm gonna light up a forest area with this. And I'm really looking forward to trying that out and seeing how well it performs using the batteries. So we can um, press the knob in and go to a different selection. So we can change, let's see, color temperatures all the way down to 2000 Kelvin. And then up to a very, very cool, we're over 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10, up to 10,000 Kelvin on the color scale. And very important is the green and red tint adjustment. We do have that built in as well. So if you're trying to match different lights in a more professional environment, those kind of settings suddenly become very important to you. So let's put this back down to say 57. Let's go back to our modes. Let's go try out the HSI modes. Okay, so we're fighting a bunch of other light in this room, but it should be able to see the colors as we switch through the different hues here. So we have it set to 100% saturation and we're gonna start going through the hues get to our oranges, our greens, very bright green. Now it's starting to get a little bit blue. The, the colors are just so pleasing. They're so perfect. It's, it's ridiculous how accurate this light is. And as we keep going, and then we get to our purples and magentas. And then we loop all the way back around to our reds again. So we have the full color spectrum. You can adjust the intensity, you can adjust the hue, and you can adjust the saturation. If we go back to the modes and we go to the RGB mode, this is almost more like a Photoshop situation, like a Photoshop color picker. You can actually go in there and dial in the R, G, and B values and get specifically any color that you want off of an RBG setting, which is really cool. Then we have the gel modes and it has all the different gels listed that you would probably use in a regular professional setup. So you got the R gels and the L gels. You can set the major color temperatures. I don't mess with that stuff, but it's in there. We have a source where you can just change your light source and get like a preset. So you got tungsten lighting, you've got um, studio lamps, 
sodium lamps, halogen lights, arc lamps, candles, sunset, sunrise. So these are just different presets available for you. If you're don't, not sure what color temperature the light needs to be set for, you can try out some of those presets. And then of course we've got the special effects like lightning and you know, let's see, CCT loop, candles, bad bulb, TV, paparazzi, explosion, pulsing, disco. You got cop car, so those kind of special effects are built in here. If you feel like giving yourself a seizure or if you actually happen to have a use case for it, that'd be great. Let's get out of there because that's gonna give me a headache. So let's real quick talk about why I like these edge lit LED panels. It's the diffusion. There are times you want specific spotlights of light and you want that harsh lighting or you want specific lighting. This is a floodlight, so it fills the whole room at like a 120 degree angle. But when I said it's diffused and it's soft, this is what I mean. Look at the shadow cast by my hand. You don't see the fingers or anything. If you get it right up on the wall, you, I mean, literally less than an inch away from the wall, that's when you finally see that the shadows are being formed. If I was using my other LED panels that had the direct LEDs, or if I was using my cob lights, this would be basically a handprint, even with my hand this far away. The fact that you can get that great of a light without adding any modifiers to it makes this super nice to use. And it gives you, especially for photography and portrait space, or if you're doing videos like talking head videos, this is the kind of light that you really want. Now that means its greatest strength is the diffusion, which also means it's, its weakness. If you do want very strong light and you want specific flood light and not have a flood of the entire area, but like a spot instead, well, you can actually get modifiers for it. They sell a honeycomb and they sell barn doors. So the barn doors will let you block the light from flooding all over the room and then the honeycomb will focus the light in. So those accessories are something I plan to get so I can use it in more artistic situations like a, a photo shoot where I don't want to light up the whole model but do more of a stylistic touch. So there are accessories available for it which like the other ones that I have do not have any accessories. So I think that's another benefit of this particular item. Next let's talk about lighting up a scene. The biggest and darkest place I have available until maybe later tonight when the actual sun goes down and I can try the backyard is the garage. So I've got it set up so that we can stand behind it and see how well it lights up this larger space and how the light gets thrown as far as behind it. Because there's so much light, when I talked about flood, I have a feeling this entire room will be lit up even with the lights off. So let's get this flipped on. and get the lights turned off. So here we go. You see how we're still a little bit dark back here, but we do have the reflected light. Our setting right now in CCT mode, this is 8% intensity, 8%. So again, let's, let's do that intensity check. Fifty percent. This is as bright as daylight. As a matter of fact, I just kicked on the garage light and it didn't even make a difference because this is so much brighter than that that it just overpowers everything. If we go all the way up for a hundred here, hundred percent intensity, we can see that it's very diffused. There's no hot spot. There's no like fall off that I can really see. It's just a nice even light all the way through. So this is definitely a great scene light for sure. And if you're looking at lighting up an entire scene and being able to do it on the go, this is a good choice. One of the very few things that I would be worried about if you're concerned about using this in portability standards is the weight. Because it is thicker than my other lights made out of metal, it's got probably beefier power supplies. There's a, there's a lot going on to it. It's not light. So this light comes in at over 10 pounds by itself. And of course, if you throw this in with the case, because it's a Pelican style case, that's gonna add more weight to it as well. 
for those of you who go by kilograms, 4.68 kilograms. Let's briefly touch on the fact that we've got app control here as well. Uh, this is pretty standard these days. Just a quick look through the app. We can do quick changes such as our main color temperatures for the light from 4300, 5600. You can change the way that the curve of the light goes. Um, we have our green and magenta shifting here, our intensity slider. We can go back uh, from CCT mode and then change to the different color modes. So here's the RGB mode, for example. And this works really well because since there's not a touch screen on the back of the light, but you do have a touch screen on your phone, now you can just slide anywhere you want in the RGB slider, which is a really, really fast and accurate way to get whatever color you're looking for. So I appreciate that feature quite a bit. We do have the HSI mode. And again, we have a color wheel, so we can scroll through there, pick out the lights that we want. The gel mode, the effects, and so the, and the source matching. The same things we have on the back of the unit we have in here, and just makes it much easier, and it lets you do it from without being behind the light. So if you have this hoisted up overhead or somewhere far away, this gives you a way to access that light and any other lights. And it does have a master and slave configuration as well, so you can configure multiple lights together to work in harmony. So in closing, what do I think about the GVM YU150R? Well, I'm actually really impressed with it. Obviously, I started with the cheaper stuff and worked my way up to something a little bit nicer. The pro quality definitely shines through. Like you can just tell this is a professional item. It offers me more brightness to fill a whole scene and it gives me more dimness when I need to do like mood lighting. I really like to take advantage of the RGB to do like creative shots and do like alternative photo styles. So for me, this light fits in my kit perfectly. I do like the fact that I can take it out anywhere on the road and it has a protective case and I can run it on batteries. It is a heavier piece of kit though. So going on a three mile hike to get into the middle of the woods is not going to happen. But on location shoots where you just have to drive to your place and then go a little bit from the trunk to the shooting spot, it works really good for that. We've got the app control, we've got all the features, we've got the connectivity. So I have no regrets on this one. This is worth picking up. Now, of course, uh, I'll put the product link down in the description down below so you can go to Amazon, which is where I got it from, and check it out. See if you want to get it yourself. And I will follow up this video when I get time to start reviewing some of the other lights I have as well because there's not one light that's perfect for everybody. So some of those smaller pocket lights that I have are great for creativity. And uh, we have some cheaper lights as well. You're not gonna get as much brightness out of this kind of light as you could a Cobb light with the spotlight, but you're not gonna be able to fill a whole scene nearly as easily with the spotlight either. So they have their place, and that's why I always will have both. So once again, this was Patrick from Vicious Computers, and I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.